In this video, let's continue building on our little shader graph. Currently, you have a nice solid color as a base and a glowing highlight around the edges. We'll carry this one step forward and replace the plain base color with a texture map. And that will allow us to make the highlight effect a bit more subtle. And we can keep the original texture of the game object and then add the Fresnel effect highlight on top. Let's pick up where we left off from the last lesson or just load up the starter project from the resources. The original texture of the safety hat is yellow with some stenciling done in Photoshop. If we swap our mesh renderer back to the original material, hard hat matte material, it looks like this. There's our yellow texture with the Unity logo painted on there. Let's change our base and rim colors so they match the original texture a little bit better. We just want to make the base color yellow. And I'll make the rim color green or bluish, something to give us a little more contrast to the yellow. Go back to the shader graph window. And you might as well change the blackboard defaults for those properties as well. I just want to give us some fallback colors that resemble the original texture. So base color yellow again, and rim color blue or green. Just pick something that gives you some contrast with the yellow base. And we can't even see that, so let's frame all with the A hotkey. And let me turn the rim power down to about one and a half. And that shows up in our master preview with our yellow base color and our bluish rim glow. If you want to visualize our final shader on your safety hat geometry rather than just a sphere, you can always right click over the master preview window and then select custom mesh. Browse for the safety hat low game object. In this beta version of Unity, there is a bug that causes the preview thumbnails not to update properly. And I'm just going to chalk that up to using the beta. In 2018.2, I didn't have that same issue. Now one workaround with this version I've discovered is that you can force the preview window to refresh just by hitting save asset in the upper left hand corner. And we hope by the time that you're watching this video that issue is gone. But in the interim, if you hit save asset, that seems to force a refresh. So you'll just see me do that periodically. Our goal is to replace the base color color node with something that allows the user to give some texture map as an input. First, let's break that connection between the base color and the albedo channel. Just select that line and right click, delete. That severs the color node from the output. So our base shader immediately turns a default gray. We still have the highlight, but the base color is gray. We can leave that color node off to the side. It doesn't hurt anything. You can always just fall back to that if you have to. I want to create a texture map to replace the color information. So naturally, we need to create a new node. Hit the spacebar shortcut to enter the Create Node menu. And we want to search for the proper input node. So let's go into Input, and then go into the Texture group under Input. We want to select the Texture 2D Asset, and that will create a Texture 2D Asset node. Just drop that into the workspace. And this has one field that is designed to take a texture map as an input. You can click the little target icon next to the empty field. And let's browse for the safety hats texture map. As you would expect, it's called safety hat albedo. And here you can see a preview of the texture that looks like the correct map. So we can dismiss this. And now we have our texture map assigned to the field. And here is where the trouble begins. You can't connect a texture 2D asset into the albedo channel of the PBR master. The output port is not compatible with the input port of this node. If you try to drag one port onto the other, you won't get a successful connection. So note that the output port is red with a data type of T2, which means a two-dimensional texture. The input port of the albedo has a three in parentheses, and that port is color coded yellow. So you know you need something in between these two ports to do some translation. If you try to drag the output port and then just let go of the line over the work area, what happens is that you get a create node menu. But this time the shader editor gives you some suggestions and only lists the nodes in this dialog that are compatible with the output port. So it's sort of like looking at a pre-filtered list. Now, if you are familiar with the particulars of any specific node in the shader graph, there's documentation that is always available based on context. 
right click over the texture 2d asset and you can find a selection that says open documentation and that will take you to the appropriate page your mini challenge for this exercise is to find out how to connect the texture 2d asset node to the pbr masters albedo now this is a simple matter of just looking through the docs figuring out what nodes are compatible and then connecting your shader graph back together so go ahead and pause the video see if you can figure out what comes next and once you have your shader graph reconnected unpause the video and then continue to the end of the lesson Welcome back. I hope that you found it. You might have figured this out just by experimentation, or you might have found it in the docs. Now, once again, if you drag from an output port of any node and then let go over the gray work area, Unity will prompt you with a create node dialog with pre-filtered results. In this case, you can see that the output of the texture 2D asset says T2 or two-dimensional texture. You can't directly connect a 2D texture with a vector three like the albedo port requires. So we need another node to look at the texture map and then change that texture into RGB values. If you read the documentation, you can see that it says the texture 2D asset should be used in conjunction with the sample texture 2D asset node. Aha. So we find that node under input texture. And here is the sample texture 2D asset. Now, once you click that, you'll see that it creates a node and it connects it all in one go. The input for this node is T2, so that matches the output of the Texture 2D asset. And the sample Texture 2D node can output four numbers as an RGBA, or you have the options of outputting the individual channels as well. Now, as we established in the last video, if you connect an RGBA output to a port that only takes three numbers, Unity is smart enough to drop the alpha value. So let's drag the RGBA vector four into the albedo vector three, and suddenly the texture shows up in our preview. And let me just work around that little display bug. I'm gonna see my custom mesh. So just hit save asset. And now we have our hard hat or safety hat with the base texture and a glowing highlight on top. Make sure your asset is saved and let's check it out in the editor. And there you go. We now have our safety hat model with the hard hat highlight matte material. And that's what we want our highlight effect to look like. But eventually we do wanna be able to swap between the two materials when we hover the mouse over the game object. So imagine if I just change the materials manually like this, we want that effect except driven by mouse events. So let's add a short script to do that in the next video.